Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to be talking about some of the recent advances and some of the recent papers in trying to essentially develop new technology to kind of travel between planets. For example, driven by the sun itself or the magnetic field around the solar system in order to propel various spacecrafts, taking us to faraway distances and to faraway places. Or in other words, we're going to be talking about new advances in the propulsion technology when it comes to spacecraft. And here we're going to be mostly talking about technologies that already kind of exist, and we know at least in theory would work very well if we were to actually launch them into outer space. And as you probably know already, one of them was recently launched on the Artemis 1 mission, and was one of the smaller CubeSats that had solar sails on it, and was supposed to use this solar sail technology to travel to a nearby asteroid in order to study it in more detail. But unfortunately, this mission failed. This is by the way what it kind of looks like, this is known as the Nia sail, and this is what it was going to look like when deployed. But as we've discussed in the recent Artemis 1 update, Nia Sail has actually been unable to communicate with the Orion spacecraft, and so we don't really know what happened to it. It seems to have malfunctioned and possibly ran out of battery, and so this particular mission is unfortunately not going to happen. Which is super sad because it would have been a great demonstration of this technology in order to see how we can use it to travel to various objects. But the thing about solar sails is that, well, there are a few problems here. As you probably know, in order to make a solar sail functional, it has to be hit by light in just the right way. In this case, the propulsion itself is created by the solar pressure from the photons striking the sail. But it also has to be deployed in just the right way, and it has to be always facing the sun. So turning these objects becomes a bit of a problem. Any change of direction will dramatically reduce the amount of solar pressure it's going to be receiving, and will thus make it a lot less efficient. So it has to be always pointed in just the right way. But to remedy this issue, some of the scientists in the last year or so started to propose a slightly different technology, diffractive solar sailing. Or in other words, there are ways to diffract the light inside the sail, changing the direction of light through various electronic means. This is already actually used a lot today in things like barcode scanners, laser rangefinders, and even to map various areas. And so generally we actually understand how to change the direction of light pretty well. It can actually be done through diffraction or refraction, and so there are quite a lot of different methods that can be used here. And this of course means that by building the solar sail out of a very specific material, it becomes possible for the sail to be oriented in other directions in order to essentially create the necessary propulsion. And relatively recently, the scientists studying this, I believe actually got a relatively large grant to try to study this more and to basically create some of the new prototypes. Which in theory means that we could potentially have these in the next decade or so. But naturally this still relies on the solar pressure and would also not really work really well around more distant objects. For example, here around Saturn, we only really get about 2% of the total sunlight, and so the solar pressure here is going to be really low. It's going to be really difficult to control these crafts. And so most of these particular devices and these technologies have really been developed to try to study the sun, for example, or to try to move around the inner solar system, maybe around Mars, the asteroid belt, or closer to Mercury it obviously becomes a lot more efficient as you move closer to the sun itself. But then, how do we use this around distant objects? Can we actually one day take these to, for example, Jupiter? Well, the only proposition I know of that involves traveling farther away involves some kind of a laser propulsion, essentially firing a really powerful laser from planet Earth, trying to hit the solar sail and trying to make it accelerate away from the planet. But this is still in really early development and has never really been tested. As a matter of fact, I don't really know if we even have accurate enough laser technology to make this happen. Here you would have to hit something with a laser as far away as several million kilometers away from planet Earth. That sounds pretty challenging. Any kind of a vibration on the planet, even someone basically stopping on the floor, would probably affect the laser beam enough to not be as effective. So in that sense, it's still a bit of a theoretical model, not really a proof of concept yet. But very recently the scientists did propose something that's exceptionally interesting and very promising something that in theory can even work between stars. Here we're talking about propulsion using magnetic fields. And it would actually solve one of the major problems with the solar sails, which would make them very difficult to use for larger missions. If you want to have more propulsion, you have to add a lot more weight. And so the actual intensity and the actual efficiency drops quite dramatically. But what if you were to take a relatively short cable and then electrify it, making it produce a huge magnetic field on the inside? And moreover, to make it even more efficient, what if you use some of the most advanced superconductors we have today to create a ridiculously powerful magnetic field? 
And that's sort of what's proposed in this paper you can find in the description below. And it relies on a really simple principle. We know that there are quite a lot of magnetic fields produced by so many objects in the solar system. And we also know that the Sun itself produces a huge amount of plasma, charged particles, that interact with magnetic fields, which here on Earth we usually observe as aurora. All of these are particles interacting with the upper atmosphere. And so in theory, a super highly magnetically charged object can rely on the effects coming from the Sun or even other planets such as Jupiter and Saturn that also have magnetic fields to start accelerating away and to push against all of this highly charged wind, solar wind, producing the necessary propulsion. In this case, the magnetic bubble would be over one kilometer in size and so it would be able to capture highly charged particles coming from the Sun from really far away. But more importantly, it would most likely save a lot on the mass itself and thus would allow us to produce relatively small probes. But the initial calculations in terms of the actual propulsion, for example, if you wanted to leave the solar system, suggest that it could maybe only reach speeds of about 700 km per second by the time it starts coming closer to some of the outer objects and by the time that it's ready to leave the solar system as well. Now, 700 km per second is still fast, but the scientists believe that it's possible to reach about 3000 km per second by using super efficient solar sails. And so even though the structure itself would be much more efficient, initially it would not be able to get as much propulsion. And that's actually because our sun produces a lot more photons used by solar sails, but not as many plasma ions used by this particular technology. However, the scientists in this paper might have solved this particular problem by using a technique that many seabirds use to fly more efficiently, even in low wind. If this spacecraft starts to loop in and out of the incoming solar wind, it can start picking up energy using a technique known as dynamic soaring. And by doing this over and over and over again, it can actually start gaining extreme velocities, possibly several thousand kilometers per second. But more importantly, as it approaches the outer solar system, it can actually then acquire even more velocity by surfing on the heliopause. The area that both Voyager probes went through a few years ago, and the area that seems to be highly enriched in very highly charged particles, which in theory, within just a couple of years, would allow it to reach velocities of 5 to 6,000 km per second. But moreover, it can actually then start to use magnetic fields between stars, or possibly even find various magnetic lines across the galaxy, to actually start exploring the interstellar space as well. And that's of course why I got super excited about this technology. Because theoretically, it provides us a way to finally, maybe, start traveling across the stars. Without breaking any major laws of physics, without doing anything that's outside of the technology we currently have, and by essentially using technology that we already have here on planet Earth that's actively tested and used in a lot of different industries. But obviously this is not going to take us to any stars anytime soon. Here we're still going to be traveling at relatively slow velocities, and so reaching the nearest star is still going to take hundreds of years. But, in theory, because of all of the advances in studying the magnetic field of galaxies, this can actually create an entire new way to travel across galaxies by literally sailing on the magnetic lines and magnetic fields that exist in galaxies everywhere. And we've actually discussed a lot of these discoveries in some of the recent videos you can find in the description. Now this is still obviously very very early on, and there's still no way to actually create a large enough spacecraft that could use this technology to travel far, but it's definitely an important first step, with the next step obviously being a proof of concept. Someone needs to make some kind of a CubeSat and launch it on one of the future missions, for example Artemis 2, in order to see if it actually works and if we can actually accelerate these devices to relatively high velocities. So maybe something to look forward to in some of the future studies. Until then, check out all the studies in the description below, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. And either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.